Hello and welcome to my channel, On The Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And let's find out what's been on the hook. I have three whips to show you today, and I want to show those to you a little bit later. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Tracy in California for her Happy New Year card. I've never seen one of these, and so I thought that was really cute. Warmest greetings and best wishes for the new year. So this is a New Year's card, and it doesn't have to be a Christmas card. Christmas is such a busy time of the year. It's hard to find time to send out cards to everybody. So Tracy said she was out of time, so she had to send some New Year's cards. And thank you, Tracy, for that. Now, I will tell you one thing about the comments that I've been receiving on my videos. Thank you so much for everyone who writes me. Y'all are so sweet and the wonderful comments that I get. You are the most wonderful subscribers in the entire world. I just totally believe that. Everybody is so complimentary and so uh, inspiring to me to keep going and to do some new things with my channel. Now one thing I will tell you though that there has been a troller Somebody's trolling my channel, and I don't know why, but they are saying that I have given you a, a prize, that you've won a giveaway prize. They're coming to you through your comments on my video, so be sure that when you get a reply to the comments, it's from me, and it's not from somebody on, I think it's Telegram, they say that they're sending it from Telegram, that you've won a prize, and you have to send something into them, either your address or your email address, and let's don't do that. Don't, you know how I select winners every single week we have a giveaway and I select them on video through the random comment picker so there's no no one sending anything from Telegram or any other social media. I think you can go to their comment and you can hit the three little dots that are usually along the side there. I'm not really sure but I think you can do that and you can report them and you can report them and maybe YouTube will take a look at them and, and remove them from the feed that goes out to the different YouTube channels. Before I get to the whips, I want to talk about what I'm wearing. And this is a sweater that I pulled out from 2021. I believe it is. It's so beautiful. I was so excited to make this. I'm just wearing it with the long sleeve t-shirt underneath. Uh, it's not very cold today. And this is a DK weight alpaca yarn. It's a luxury yarn, very beautiful. I received it from Knit Crate and then I ordered some more to make a sweater quantity because I just love the color. The color is called Sanguine. You can't get it anymore unless you go to eBay or maybe uh, Distachio or one of those places that has yarn that has been released earlier and is now discontinued, which this of course is. And I really enjoyed working with it. I uh, wrote a pattern for it because it is an unusual sweater and I'll show you why. Now that I have you up close, I'll show you this part first. There are decorative stitches and a decorative border all around the neck. If you can see that, that's all decorative stitching. And then I also have decorative stitching around the armholes here around the body of the sweater. And those translate under here, all the way down to the hem. The hem has decorative stitches on it as well. Let me show you those. There are the decorative stitches around the hem. And then also there are decorative stitches around the wrist right here. Um, I put in a lot of work on this pattern. I really love wearing it too, it's so soft. And if you can get a hold of some DK wool, uh, or even acrylic. I'm sure a light acrylic would be great. Make sure it has plenty of drape. You have all of these decorative stitches around the neck and other places. So I'm going to stand up and show you how it fits me. Okay, here's my Spanish Dancer sweater. And just so beautiful. I, I guess I was in love with the color more than anything, but I do like the uh, alpaca wool. I found it to be, since I put it on this morning, it's gotten really nice and warm, but it's not scratchy anymore. It was when I first put it on, I thought, oh no, it feels kind of scratchy, but um, now that I've had it on for a few minutes, it's warmed up, and the scratchiness basically disappears. This is, again, Alpaca 100%, and it's a Knit Crate product. So uh, let me show you how it fits. I have some ease in this. There's probably about... Um, maybe four to six inches of ease around the hips, not too much. Um, it was probably a fitted sweater last year because I have lost a little bit of weight. So, uh, and I don't say that to brag or anything. I just want y'all to know why my sweaters fit differently this year. They are still perfectly suitable to wear though. I didn't make them so big that uh, they wouldn't look right on me. So this has some ease in it, which is very, very comfortable. And I'll show you the back. The back is about mid hip. Oh, around the bottom is about mid-hip and the sleeves are 
a little bit long. They're a little bit past my wrist, which I really like. Uh, if I can get it just right, I don't like sleeves that are way down to the knuckle. I don't really like those but I do like a sleeve that's plenty long. You don't have to keep pulling it down when you wear the sweater. So again, this is the Spanish Dancer and you can find it on my Etsy shop if you're interested in making it. It's not difficult and these lines of decorative stitches are, uh, are not done as you do each row. They're done all at one time. So they're very easy to crochet. So again, Spanish Dancer, you can find it on my Etsy shop. I love going back and looking at some of my older patterns. Um, I forget how fast I was making them. Some I was making a week at a time. Uh, every week I was coming out with a different pattern and I glossed over a lot of those uh, because I haven't worn a lot of them. I've made so many. I think I have a hundred patterns on my Etsy shop and most of them are garment patterns. I've got probably 90 of them are garment patterns. Um, so I, I rushed through it last year and I wanted to bring back some of these patterns because y'all haven't even seen them. Many of my subscribers have never seen me wear a lot of my patterns. So every week I'm going to try to show a blast from the past, a pattern from the past. And doesn't mean I'm not writing new patterns, but I'm a little bit slower than I was before. I have a lot of whips on the hook and uh, some of them will be patterns in the future. So I just wanted y'all to know that. Now here's an update on my Hobie project that I have in my thumbnail if you saw it and you clicked on it or it came up uh, this is the Hobie sweater that I am working on for the No Shades of Grey challenge and I'm not making this very long it's going to be just below my waist my waist is here so it's down below my waist but not quite as long as this Spanish dancer underneath but this is what it looks like and I'm not obviously haven't done the sleeves yet. Those are my next project because I am finished with the bottom. I did put a row, some rows of ribbing. I think there are five rows of ribbing here, and uh, it turned out nice. I, I sized down on the hook for the ribbing, and it hugs my body a little bit better. See how it hugs a little bit um, different. It fits a little bit differently from when I use just the same hook size for the body of the sweater. Also, right here. <laughs> I have left my stitch markers in, but these are the two places where I increased at the underarm. underarm. Now I started at the underarm doing the body and about two rows down, I increased for the bust line, as you can see. And that gave me a little bit more room in the front than in the back. I'm not sure that's very clear, but um, I did increase the sweater right here for the bust line and I just left it there. I didn't decrease back down at the bottom. I just left it and it's fitting very, very nicely. I'm not going to put it on because I already have a sweater on, but this is what it looks like on and I'm just real excited about it. I love purple and I don't have any real nice purple sweaters. So I think that's a beautiful grape color. Again, this is for the Hobie Challenge, No Shades of Gray YouTube. And uh, they asked me to collaborate with them and I did and I'm so excited. Let me show you the yarn that I'm using. First of all, I'm using Friends Wool, which is 100% wool from Hobie. Very nice, very soft, very easy to crochet with. It does not split. It's very easy to frog out, which I've done a couple of times. <laughs> it's not been too bad, but I have done that. Um, but Friends Wool by Hobie, uh, it's not expensive. And also, this coordinates, the colors coordinate um, among the different types of yarn that Hobie sells. There are several different ones. I was using the Mohair to go with this and it's a beautiful match. It gives the um, the sweater a nice halo. I really, really like it. And the mohair is called Friends Kid Silk by Hobie. Friends Kid Silk. And the type of yarn it is, um, it's a mohair, 72% mohair, 25% silk and 3% wool. So it really adds a lot to the project. So that's the progress I've made on my No Shades of Gray by Hobie and thank you Hobie for sponsoring me on this particular project. I'm using the winter stripe sweater pattern for that. Um, as you can see it's sort of basically the same but at the bottom of these stripes and I know y'all have noticed this but at the bottom of the stripes I've added um, three more stripes in the same colorway order as that up here but I'm only putting one row of each one so it, it worked out great. It looks a little bit more put together. I like it. And I might repeat this on the sleeves at the bottom. So when I get there, I'll decide. But I think that's what I'm going to do on that project. Another whip I'm working on is my multicolored Cardi, which of course I've made now three times. This may be the fourth one. 
this is the fourth one I've made. <laughs> I really like it. I like the pattern because it's easy to make, and I go by my own pattern. I do go by it, and I take my measurements every time I make this particular pattern because I want it to fit just right. This is from um, City Tweed. This is made with City Tweed in the coastal color. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And I am now ready to break for the sleeve. So I have it just about right here. The Spanish Dancer underneath is about this long. See right there? And I might add a little bit of ribbing on the bottom of this just to make it a tiny bit longer, but as a cardigan might need to be. But honestly, a cardigan can be any length you want it to be. And uh, I plan to wear this with a black top under it and a black skirt to church or something like that. But this is gorgeous. I mean, it's turned out so nice. City Tweed in the DK size. Really love it. I love it, and it's easy to make by my pattern. So that is my second whip that I'm working on this week. In addition, here's another whip I'm working on, the Northwest Vest. I started this last week, and I love the way it's turning out. This is a project made with Mary Maxim, Aaron Irish Tweed, not sponsored by any of these companies except for Hobie. I, they did sponsor that project, but this is Worsted Weight Irish Tweed. It is very, very soft. I'm really enjoying using it. I'm this far out of my first skein, so I've used up almost one skein. I have four, so I'm in good shape there, but this is how much I've done. I'm ready to break for the sleeves on this one as well. So I'll be putting some stitch markers in this and marking it up to uh, break for the, uh, for the sleeves. Actually, I'm going to have it about this long. It's about 12 inches from the underarm to the hem at this point. I may not add any uh, edging at the bottom. I don't really need any. There are two rows of half double crochets at the bottom, so I'll probably just leave that as is. And um, this is how long it's going to be, right about there. So that's a pretty good length for a vest. And again, I can wear a black t-shirt, turtleneck, tank top, anything under this, or brown, I can go with brown, or any other light color I think would look really nice with this. Even a cream color would look good. Um, but this will be a practical uh, garment piece because I can wear it with so many things and all the way into the spring, just for a little bit of warmth, um, maybe when I go out, and I won't have to wear a jacket or a long sleeve shirt or a long sleeve sweater, actually. Um, so anyway, that's the progress I've made on my Northwest vest. So I've been working on that as well. And when I start to break for the sleeves, I need perfect concentration. And in the last few days, I haven't had that. I've only had time to do just back and forth work. And I'll, I'll show you one more whip that I'm working on. This is Jeannie's Granny Throw in progress. I've done quite a few squares. And they're all in different colors, all different DK colors. Oh, and they're turning out so nice. Look how pretty those are. And those are my, um, the squares I've made that I haven't put the edging on. And these I've already put the edging on of the uh, cream colored. Um, this is uh, Superwash Merino by Lion Brand. Not in this color, obviously, but in a cream color. And that's what I'm using for the borders around the squares, and then I'll also use it for the final border around the entire throw. So this is Jeannie's Granny Throw, and I will put the instructions out for it because I really love the square that I've kind of perfected. I really like it. It's a, uh, a flower right in the middle, and then going around the edges are not all double crochet. There are different stitches in there that make it a little more interesting. And it fl it's flat, a little bit flatter. I like the way that it, they're laying down. Um, here's another one that I just did. Isn't that beautiful? I really like that. And that is a DK weight yarn as well. Now, I think that this one right here is a fingering weight. <laughs> I picked it out of my stash, but I, I upsized the hook just a little bit and made the stitches um, very loose. And I actually have it at the same size as the others. It's the same size, but I think the yarn is really a fingering weight. I can't be sure, but I think it is. But look how pretty that turned out really nice. I really like it. So this is Jeannie's Granny Throw, and I will put out the pattern for this. I'll make it so that you can actually make these without being confused, which is very easy to be. When you look at a granny square pattern, sometimes they're very confusing to me. Um, 
not always, but you know, that's sort of a standard in crochet world. If you can make a granny square, you're in pretty good shape. So that's the progress I've made on this. And I will need to make 25 of these. So I only have about five or six more to go. And then I will put all the edging on these and then I will border it and I'll have the pattern ready for you when I get finished. For those of you who are interested in diamond painting, I have an update plus a few things I want to talk about um, uh, concerning uh, items that you can purchase that are very useful with diamond painting. I'm not sponsored by any of these people, but I just wanted to show you a few things that I use when I'm doing my diamond painting. So here we go. Here is my weekly look at my diamond painting, Angel Playing a Flagelle. So beautiful. And I'll show you that in just one moment. But I want to sneak over here and show y'all some things that I use while I'm diamond painting. Some of you have picked up this hobby and I wanted to show you some of the things that I've found that are very, very helpful in this hobby. So let's take a look. I'm using, of course, a rolling cart here and I have a lot of things down here that I use occasionally, not all the time. But right here, these are things I use all the time. Of course, they're my scissors that I cut the uh, plastic top over the diamond painting. I cut that off as I go so it's not in my way. Um, I also have a magnifying glass. Mr. On the Hook gave me this, and it does make things much easier to see. Look at that. The uh, magnification is awesome on this. It wasn't very expensive. I think he got it on Amazon, but um, that's something that I use quite often. You can see it's a little bit dirty there. Sorry about that. And then I have all of my extra pins here that I, I don't use all that much, but I know where they are in case I want to use them. And of course, um, other than my scissors, these are, this is a, uh, a cloth that I use to clean my magnifying glass and also my glasses that I put over my contacts so that I can keep it clean and I can see every little detail because with diamond painting, you really need to see that detail. So this is what I use to clean the glass. Here are two kinds of clamps that I use. This one, the metal one there on the right is one that I use to uh, hold the canvas to the light pad and that works very well and here is an example of that there it is right there holding the canvas to the light pad so that it'll stay steady and it, it'll be in my purview so that when I sit down I don't have to reach very far in order to reach the part of the canvas that I'm working on these blue ones um, are also very useful these two of them here attached together they I can use to attach my easel to the canvas. So if the if the canvas is next to the easel, see here it's too far away so I can't use these particular clamps, but when I have the canvas closer to the edge of the easel, I can use them to hold on to it. It doesn't do that good a job. I don't really like those as much as I like the metal ones, and I keep those in a little uh, plastic bag right there nothing special nothing fancy and one thing I wanted to show you this is really interesting this is a vacuum cleaner for drills and I have found it to be one of the most useful items I have bought for my diamond painting and see that little button right there that's the on button and when you press that it sucks up drills here on uh, I guess through the middle hole there, it sucks them up. I don't, I'm not sure exactly how all that works, but this is what it sounds like. And you just roll it over your drills that you may have spilled and it picks them right up and then you can take it apart. You just pop it open and knock the drills out. And if they're clean, if they don't have a lot of hair or dust on them, you can reuse them again. I usually put them in a different container so that if I need them, I can find them, but I don't mix them in with my clean drill. So that's how I use my uh, drill vacuum cleaner. Now let's look at the progress I've made this week. Oh, so beautiful. Look at this. I was right in here somewhere, I think last time we talked, and I've worked all the way over here to the edge of the painting. And this is what I'm working on right now. That's the section I'm working on. I have one more evening to finish that and this section over here um, on this side. And then I'll be moving up to the top row and I'll be finished with my painting fairly soon. So this is where I'm going right now, probably to this area here because I'm still using these colors. So I'll probably move up there do another square there, and then I'll move into the wings and the top of the head, 
the wings over here and then I'll be all finished. So I'm really excited about this. Again, someone asked me where I got this and I, I bought the canvas from Heaven and Earth Designs and their specialty section there is called Crown Jewel Class Canvases. And that's where you can find a diamond painting canvas that is specially um, sectioned off, I guess, for diamond drills. And they're very, very small. And I'm not sure if cross stitch squares are smaller than that. They may be. I don't really know. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've done any cross stitch. But these are the sizes of the drills. And they're very, very small very tiny but there again when you get finished and you step away from it like this if you step away you can see all the shading in the painting especially here under the uh, chin around the top of the uh, the clothing right here and also all through the beautiful wings they're all done in lots and lots of shading there so uh, they've also mixed in purple here which i just noticed um, the last time I was working on this, I was over here and I thought, what is all that purple? I never even looked at it. I was so busy uh, getting it finished. I didn't step back and look at the beauty of this absolutely gorgeous painting. So again, there's a lot that's unrolled here that will be unrolled. And I will show you that uh, when I finish the painting, I'll lay it out and show you the whole thing as it's finished. So um, let me show you this real quick. I know people have asked me how I set up. And this is what I'm doing here. These are all the colors that are in this particular painting. There are my glasses there. And these are the ones I'm using right now. These are the colors. And I can quickly find them if I've missed a square. I can go back and find them very easily rather than going through all these colors looking for this particular one that I'm looking for. Also up here, I have rearranged them so that all of the similar types of diamond drills are in the same place. For example, let's move over here and I'll show you all the squares, all, everything that is square related. For example, all of these symbols are squares with different uh, attributes to them. And so I put them all in one line so that I can find, if I see a square, I can go to this column and I see that all my squares are there. All of my flowers are over here. Everything that has to do with flowers is in this line. Up here, I have um, circles right here. These are all circles that either have nothing in them or a line, a shading, a, a crosshair. All of those go together and so on. So I have all of these sectioned off by types of symbols that they are. These are all the money symbols and mathematic symbols. So you have a, a dollar sign, a cent sign, backward cents, parentheses, I'm sorry, uh, uh, percentages, and a straight percentage. That's almost, it's very similar to this one. And then a number sign. So as you can see, I have them all kind of uh, laid out according to the type of symbol they are. So when I find a symbol, I can immediately go over here and find it. Rather than going through this, excuse me, let me get over here this row right here which is now upside down because it's at the top of the painting but all of these numbers correspond to all these symbols but all these symbols are actually totally different so you have to go through and find the exact symbol that you're looking for so it's much easier for me to go over here yeah i see a symbol and then i go over here to my colors that I have labeled in all different types of colors that I have all the symbols that are similar to each other and I can find them much much quicker so it has sped up the process of finding the colors so that I can get them uh, to my canvas so again this is the progress I've made and a little bit about diamond painting if you're interested uh, it's a fun fun thing to do this is a little bit more advanced than most um, if you're just starting out, starting out with a small one is much easier. This is a very large painting and you might want to start out with something very, very small that'll fit on your easel or on your table or on your light pad, which is right here. This is not a very big light pad, but it's the biggest one I could find. And it goes for, I think it's um, 14 inches by maybe 10 or 12 so that's how big that is. So you can see how big this canvas is. Pretty big. It's about 20 something. So I uh, just wanted to show you that. That's the progress I've made this week on my diamond painting. Now the other day I was out of town and I found a Joann's 
that is absolutely brand new and huge. It's in another city. It's not in my little town here. So uh, I saw the sign and Mr. On the Hook said, why don't you go in there and just uh, take a video or look around, see what you see, and I will go do something else. So he left me there and boy, I just enjoyed that trip so much. And let me show you why. I think I saw Cinnamon, uh, Jennifer at Cinnamon Stitches uh, had a... Uh, a picture of the new Joanne. It's a big green Joanne sign and it says handmade happiness underneath it. I don't know if that's the one that she saw similar to it. Must be a new upgrade for Joanne's. They're doing some new things with their stores and mine here has not caught on but the one that I was at out of town was amazing and I took some video and I want to show that to you right now. Yes, there you see it, the new Joann's. I'm in Knoxville, this is the suburbs out here. And there's a brand new Joann, they just opened uh, at the end of last year. And their new slogan is Handmade Happiness. So I can understand that. I'm going to take you inside and we're gonna take a look at the yarn department. So let's go. This is a whole new layout. I've not seen this before. Right as you come in the door are all the fabrics. And look at this, this is just amazing. Also, look at my new cart here. Isn't this the coolest thing? It's brand new. And this big Joanne right here. Place to put your coffee or your tea and your child. And this is up high, so you don't have to bend down to it to put things inside. I really like that, that's a nice, a nice cart. We call them buggies here in the South more fabrics look at this now how open it is look this is just gorgeous uh oh i see some yarn let's see what this is over here this is Burnett blanket of course let's see if i can find some more yarn here i'm not seeing it right off with that i see some over there in the corner let me see how Far I have to go to get to the yarn. It's a place to look at pattern books. All right, over here I see some, oh yeah, on the wall if you'll notice, over here. We're passing the paint section. Right over here. If you look on the wall, as we turn this big corner here, oh look, here's some big twist. This is another, more blanket yarn, I guess. And this starts the yarn right here. There's one aisle here, but on the wall, I wanted to show you this. When I, first I saw it as I was moving toward, toward, as I was moving around the store. Oh, look at this. I'm distracted, too many squirrels in here. I haven't been to a Joann's this big in a while. Some really beautiful yarns, but they're low on inventory. Look, there's a lot of empty facings in here. Looks like they're a little bit low here on the Red Heart with Love. Yeah, got some Lion Brand Basic Stitch. Lion Brand Basic Stitch. All different colors, but look at all the the bins that are empty. Look at that. There's a lot of empty bins here, which is a problem I know for inventory. A lot of a lot of companies are struggling with that. Here are all your accessories. When look at all the empty spots. Look at that. There's one crochet hook right there. So let's go around here. Look on the wall there. It says knit it leaving our crocheters out that's okay we'll still use the yarn now this is a whole wall of looks like red heart super saver i do like these colors though look how pretty that is i like that color super nice it goes in this bin right here these are all kind of tweedy types and they're all categorized and separated by color. Very beautiful, beautiful wall display here. 
see what this is right here. I go for the variegated. Love the variegated. Here's a pink, and then there's it's like a Christmas color here. Whoops, upside down. Sorry. Super Saver. Let's see what color this is. Mistletoe. Well, that's appropriate. Look how cute that is. I do love those colors. Very pretty. But even more colorful is this right here. And this is fall. It's called fall. And I can see why. Look at the colors in that. So beautiful. But what I love about this is the wall. Look at this wall full of beautiful colors. This must be a new layout for Joanne. That has to be what this is. Now here's a look here. Here's a table. It says knit your way to happy. You can do it. So that must be where they have classes. Knitting and crochet class would be my guess. And here's another value yarn and blanket yarn wall right there full pretty much but there's some empty baskets over here look right there there's some empty baskets um looks like they're low on their yarn inventory oh here's more yarn let's go down this way again let's take a look at this wall this is so awesome <laughs> look at this knit it and look at the colors look look how big this is i bet that's 50 feet long and all the different colors. My guess is it's all red heart. No, wait a minute, let me see what's over here. I thought it was red heart, but I think we have some Karen. Yeah, here's some Karen one pounders. Look how big this thing, what well, thing weighs a ton. Well, it weighs a pound. <laughs> okay, yarn inspirations, very lovely. The Karen, that's a pretty color. It's kind of a tone, different colors mixed in. Very pretty. Yeah, let's see what color that is. That is called medium gray mix. Medium gray mix. And there's a little bit lighter color there. These are all, I believe these are all Karen cake. Karen jumbo. All the different colors there. There's that. This looks like Karen as well. This is probably Karen Capes. Yeah, Karen Jumbo Ombre. Oh, look at that. Pretty, pretty. Love that. Very pretty. This is uh, Pound of Love. I believe that Reliant Brands pound, um, pound size yarn to compete with the Karen One Pounders over here. And this is the Lime Brand Pound of Love all the way up there. But look at that, all that empty up there. They don't have any excess inventory. That's probably where they store it. And I don't see it. And here's a whole display of Bernat Blanket. They have the Bernat Blanket yarn here. Look at all this. There's another, another whole section of it right there. All right, so that looks like it. Okay, I'm looking down the center aisle here, and look at all this yarn. It's just piled into boxes. Look at that. I'm still walking away from the yarn section, and there are boxes and boxes of yarn. Here's some more yarn down here at the bottom. There's some red heart in there. All different kinds. I can't believe all this yarn. Here's all this in the boxes. Here's a a bin of Bernat Blanket, a Pound of Love, and Karen One Pound. Look at all that. There's another one. Oh my. Now it looks like they're setting up here for classes and things, so um, this is a huge store. And there's just you know everything you'd ever want in here but that was all the yarn that i found so joanne will say goodbye to you there it looks like there's a lot of places to have classes here see look at all this is the third table i've seen set up with chairs 
where they're probably doing classes now that we're able to meet in person. So there you go. And I'll just say goodbye to Joanne. Now it's time for our giveaway portion of the program. Last week I talked about three giveaways that we have for this week. And one is Scapies Whirl. Whoops, upside down. Scapies Whirl. And this is in the color Blueberry Bomb Bomb. So pretty. Let me show you the front of that. The inside, it starts with kind of a white, actually very white. And then it graduates around to some beautiful blues. Um, this is a high quality yarn. It's a quite beautiful. I know a lot of people have used this particular one. I have not, but this is a uh, this is a gift from Peg to me and for me to you. So I'm giving this away and thank you, Peg, so much for this. I really appreciate it. It is uh, 60 cotton, 40 acrylic. So anyway, that will go to giveaway winner number one and the comment word was blue. I have 11 skeins of this particular yarn and this is the Eversoft by Premier and it is a multicolor. It's called Kaleidoscope. It's 207 yards on the ball, 100% acrylic. It's a size 4 worsted. So there are 11 skeins of this. So I'm giving five to one person who used the word five in their comment and six to another person who used six in their comment and that's how I wanted to split it up five and six. So that's plenty of yarn to do whatever you want to do. Uh, over a thousand yards to each person. So again, that's two gifts, one for five and one for six games. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins this yarn today. Here we are at the computer and as you'll notice we have the word blue there and we're going to give away this beautiful blue yarn by Scapies. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. All right, I've answered all the questions, so let's go down here and find out how many comments we had that wanted this particular yarn, and that was 225. That's quite a few people that wanted that. So let's find out who wins this beautiful uh, cake of yarn from Scapies, and that would be Diana. Diana, uh, you have won this beautiful yarn, and uh, be sure to send me your mailing address, and I'll get that off to you right away. Now, let's go up here and change this word to five. And I don't mean the number five. I hope you were um, aware of that. I saw the word five in most everybody's comment. So five is the word we're after now. And let's hit the return button here. Um, let's go down here and answer our question, which is the number five. I'm sorry, I'm moving all around today. And let's find out how many comments we had with the word five, and that would be, whoops, it's going to make me do something again here. All right, let's try this. 155. So 155 people were interested in the five skeins of the Eversoft Premier. So let's who, see who wins the five skeins. And that would be Sylvia Maxwell. Sylvia, Sylvia Maxwell, you have won the five skeins of Eversoft Premier. So congratulations. Let's go up here and use the word, I think it was six. Wait a minute, let me figure this out here. Six, I, X. All right, we're going to use the word six, and we're going to come down here and answer our question and find out how many people were interested in the six gains. 156, okay. Let's find out who wins the six skeins of Eversoft Premier from On the Hook Crochet, and that would be Patricia Snotty. Patricia Snotty, you have won. <laughs> you counted five, six, seven, and eight. Look at that. That's cute. So you have won the six skeins of Eversoft Premier. Thank you so much to everyone who participates every week. I see these names come through here, and y'all are so sweet, and you congratulate the winners, which I think is very humble and wonderful. So thank you so much. Stay, always at, put a comment in there, and you may come up and win sometime if you haven't already won. So thank you all three winners, and we will return to our video. Congratulations to our winners, and thank you for participating. I appreciate all of you who participate in my giveaways, and it makes me feel good that I'm sending out some of my stash 
uh, I always I send out patterns as well and next week I'll be doing one of those but before we do that uh, I have a winner of the crochet magazine Patty Royce Patty I have not heard from you um, again, if I have heard from you, send me another email because I've been very careful about looking in my spam folder, but I may have missed it. Also, the Crochet World magazine goes to Rhonda Hoskins. This goes to Rhonda Hoskins. And Rhonda, I may have heard from you. I'm not sure. I had an email last night, and I believe it was from Rhonda, but I'm not sure about that. Also, I have some Heartland Yarn who... Uh, the winner has not contacted me yet, so I had two Heartland Yarn gifts, so go back in my videos and watch them and make sure that you're not the one that won those because they're sitting here waiting to go. I have again, as a gift from Peggy, the uh, Lamia Diamond um, Yarn. I only see one of these. I hope I don't have more than one, but if I do, I'll send the rest of them out. But it's this going one. It's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. It's low pilling yarn, and it is made from... 70% acrylic, 30% microfiber, 100 grams, 229 yards on the ball. So you can make something small with this. It's a very beautiful yarn. Let me get that up there where you can see it. It's a little bit shiny. Uh, it's really pretty and it's very, very, very soft. Also, for this winter, I'll also receive a Shape G's or Escape G's <laughs> whirl in another colorway. And this colorway is called slice o cherry pie slice o cherry pie again this is given to me by peg chandler peg thank you so very much this is so gorgeous look at this how beautiful that is it starts out with gray and it goes up to a beautiful burgundy color right there it says cherry so that's a cherry color according to to scapies but anyway that is a very nice cake of yarn just like the blue one that i gave away only in a different colorway so that will go to winner number one, both, both skeins, or a cake and a skein. And then winner number two will receive a free pattern. And this is the pattern for my busy bag that came out in the fall lookbook last year. And I really enjoyed doing the fall lookbook. I would like to do another one this year. I'm, I can't promise, but I might be working on that soon because you have to get so far ahead to release four or five patterns at one time. Uh, you have to start early and I did for this this was the big busy bag and it's a Japanese knot bag basically but I make it all in one piece and all at one time see I don't even think you have to take your crochet hook out I can't remember I don't think so um, but anyway it takes one and a half skeins of rewind tape yarn and Lion Brand uh, manufactures also other tape yarns that are manufactured uh, they're called tape yarns and they're made from this sort of a flat it's, it's a tape yarn you've probably seen it in maybe a big box store it's a tape yarn and this is by lion brand this is this one i actually made it with lion brand rewind but this is what it looks like it's very cute it actually when it's unknotted it'll fit on your shoulder and there's some pictures of it um in the pattern i believe yeah here's one of me wearing it unknotted up here at the top so um and there's the uh, there's the tassel right there in the front i made this back in the summer you can see i just have on a short sleeve shirt <laughs> anyway this is the busy bag pattern and i'm going to send that out to the net to that winner in addition to the yarn to make it and this is rewind tape yarn it is 242 yards on the ball and uh, it's a number five bulky, and I know it doesn't look bulky, but I guess it is. It's, it's a number five bulky, and you use one strand of it. You don't have to double the strands or anything. I used one strand to make this, and I used a number seven crochet hook, which is the yellow clover, and if I have it, I'll show it to you right here. This is the, the hook that I use to make this. Anyway, I'm going to send the pattern and three skeins of rewind. Now, it only takes a skein and a little bit of another one to make a busy bag, so there's enough here to make two busy bags with, right there. Enough to make two busy bags, and I'm also sending the pattern out so that you'll know how to do it if you don't already have the busy bag pattern. If you do, just give it to someone. They might enjoy having it. So that will go to winner number two next week. I'm just having two winners, and... Uh, we're going to try to catch up on our gifts to be sending out to people. I, I 
know there are a couple people that haven't contacted me yet. And I like to keep up with that. I don't really want the gifts to sit around here because then people forget about them altogether. So uh, another week, be sure that you contact me and let me know that you've won a gift. And if you have, send an email to me and put winner in the subject line. And then tell me what you won and who you are and your address. And I will get that out to you right away. That's all I have for today. I appreciate you stopping by. Please like this video before you click away. Please like it because that helps my algorithm and more people uh, are shown this YouTube video. So I thank you so much for that, for sharing my videos as well. If you have a crochet friend, be sure to share my video and that way they can see what's going on and they can subscribe and hit the bell as well. So they'll know when my videos come out. Also, I had video number two for my uh, Annie's Afghan go out and it's out there now and you can take a look at that if you're following along or if you're crocheting along with me I thank you so so much uh, I appreciate people that are going along with me and if you just want to be just curious as to what it's like to get a kit every month and then crochet up what they tell you to and it makes your Afghan bigger and bigger every month until you're finished in 10 months and I'm really excited about that project that I'm collaborating with Annie's on so be sure you look at that I'll put a link to it at the end of this video and you can check it out and uh, it's only about 10 minutes long maybe 11 minutes long or something very easy to watch so uh, be sure to do that and join me next time to find out what's on the hook <laughs>